Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Axon TD. This is a rogue-like tower defense game that is all about building the map and defeating enemies. So our enemies will be coming from the left over here and squirreling their way along this path all the way to the end of the map. Now, we have a couple of runners as well as squadrons. Squadrons, uh, you need AoE damage to deal with, though something like this blast tower at the start of the maze could be quite handy. But you can see, based on where we put this tower, it will actually modify the path. The blue path is the new path, the orange path is the old. So we have to kind of be careful where we put things uh, and based on where we want people to go. In my view, I would like for the mobs to come out here go straight down this way, around two lines of path, and then back up this way. So I'm going to start building out the pathway that I want. I'm going to put a blocker over here. I'm going to add a piece of pathway here. I'm going to put the blast cannon right there, like so. And I'm going to put the pulse ray cannon right here. And this way we have a decent amount of overlap of these two cannons on this corner, which will maximize the exposure. Uh, I have another add tile. I kind of want to be building out to our eventual goal. So I'll just go ahead and continue to build in our ideal direction. Now the blast cannon, it does low damage, but it does it to everyone in range. So it's pretty decent at dealing with these. You can see as it blasts and it blasts. So it's quite good at taking out these squadrons. Whereas this cannon over here, the pulse ray, it's quite good at taking out the single target groups. Continuing to blast and blast and blast and blast. We're looking good. I'm going to go ahead and speed the game up so that we can let it happen. So every time you finish a wave in this game, you get to choose a reward. You can also re-roll for a different reward. We have the choice here, the gravity trap, which has a one 0.5 second slow duration with a linger. Uh, we also have the ion beam, which applies a stacking slow to the target up to a tap, up to a cap. Each stack has its own duration. So we either want to get a trap that costs 40 that applies slow to everyone, or we can get an ion beam that has a potential slow. Now the thing about the ion beam is it also does damage, and it's only 10 more expensive than the gravity trap but the big advantage of the gravity trap is that it is a force multiplier for existing towers right for all these towers here the gravity trap will actually improve it i'm gonna go for the gravity trap i like that idea i'm gonna put a single gravity trap right here and so now all enemies coming through my zone they will they, their pathway will take slightly longer uh, i got another add tile so i'm gonna go ahead and put it right there and i'm gonna put a second blast cannon here this way i can make sure that I deal with any of those groups of mobs, right? These squadrons need to be dealt with. And then my main cannon here, this should be able to deal with the larger groups. I'm also going to put a cannon down here, just in case anything squirrels past. I do have the ability to sell two towers per round for full refund, including any power investment. Power is the resource you can put into towers to upgrade them. And I got to say, this is honestly uh, probably my favorite new tower defense game. I think it does need some improvements. I think the fundamental concept is in a really good place, and I'm, I'm really excited to see what they plan to do with it. Um, but generally speaking, I think it's in a great place. So we're just going to let the, the blast towers take care of this. Now, this guy's a little bit tankier. He might get through our towers. That's fine. So we have the choice to add a radiation vent, which will add a lingering dot, or we can go for a flame vent trap. Now, here's the thing. The flame vent trap actually works quite well in conjunction with the gravity trap. Because the gravity trap has a lingering slow applied to it, it will make people stand on the flame vent trap for longer. And this does 5 damage every 0.5 seconds to all enemies on it. So I'm going to go for the flame vent trap. I'm going for a trap heavy build. I'm going to go ahead and place another tile here. Uh, I will make use of the flame vent trap immediately after this. Now I don't know how long 1.5 seconds is in terms of like how much of the course a character will will cover like a, an enemy character will cover but i think like it should be enough to where like this this flame vent should just do a decent amount of damage you know um, and it'll help especially the what i really like about the flame vent is it does damage to every character on the map equally um, that's something i quite appreciate about it it does look like the slow lasts till about they finish walking over the flame vent so i'm pretty happy with that setup and any stragglers are getting caught by this tower that i put in the back i'm gonna put a second pulse right here i think although actually Maybe we'll have a look here. Ah, okay, so we get our first few interesting choices. So we could choose a support tower, which increases the range of all adjacent towers. This could significantly change how we want to build our maze. And when I say significantly, I mean significantly. Now, we could also get the flame vent upgrade, which will deal damage 
every 0.5 seconds, but it'll also give a lingering damage, which is one damage per second for four seconds. That seems like a very inefficient upgrade, although it does apply to everyone on the map, remember. Or we can get power to upgrade more things. And if we finish a wave perfectly, we'll get 10 credits and five power. I'm going to go for the eco build here. If we can perfect a wave, we will get a bonus. I'm going to uh, now show you the expand feature. So you think this is the map? No, 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 no. This is the map. You can expand the map with tiles. Yes, I know it's incredible. It's beautiful. You can rotate it so you can get the configuration you want. And depending on where you place this, you will get a certain amount of resources. If I put it here, I'll get a recycle tile. If I put it here, I'll get an ad tile. If I put it here, I'll get money. I like getting money. I don't know about you guys. Does anyone else like money? But I think if I place it like this, maybe like here. Yeah, like this feels really nice to me. This suits me. So now I could potentially redirect up this way. I'm going to focus on building the pathway I'd originally envisioned. And that's going to involve a another pulse ray right here. And then I'm going to do another flame vent and gravity trap just to keep everyone inside this. I'm going to sell this pulse ray and move it one tile so that it, like the coverage on these corners is a little bit better. So I've got a really nice concentrated damage zone. I'll eventually I'll redirect enemies up and around this way and we'll kind of maybe do something with that but i think as it currently stands we're feeling pretty good i would like to have a way to spend my energy the um the power but it's it's not the most critical thing now one thing is the downside of the slow is it means some of these enemies when they die they restore the hp of all nearby creeps when they die um, and unfortunately that does mean when we slow them they're all going to clump up and like get efficient healing from each other so that's a little bit of a downside but it's not the end of the world. We have pretty good AoE and single target damage, so we can kind of burn through this as it currently stands. Now, this is a troop carrier, so these are really, really important to get killed uh, because they are strong single target units, but inside them they carry a squadron. So you kind of need a, you always need to have a mixture of AoE and single target damage. Now, we've got a choice here. Uh, reduce the trap and mine cost by three credits. This would actually scale really well for my build because I have two traps, or I could get the gravity trap would periodically stun creeps, uh, also give me money. Or I could go for the arc reactor, which fires a lightning bolt. I'm going to go for the reducing of trap and mine cost. I think this is going to scale really nicely throughout the game if I can get to the late game. So I've got 64 cash in the bank and this wave is getting harder. I'm trying to think what would be the best way for me right now to make my wave harder. I think having a blast cannon. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell this tower. I'm going to put this uh, this particle tower here, this pulse ray, and then I'm going to put it with a blast cannon. That way I have a second damage zone with AoE and single target. And this should be enough. I do need to start thinking about how I'm going to spend my power um, because it's, it's not ideal, my current setup. But I'm going to go ahead and start speeding things up a little bit here. And some of these guys will start to make it through. Um, we just there we just don't have that much damage, right? That's just the reality of the situation we're in. See, this is why we want the blast damage in the second damage zone over here because there is some AoE guys that we need to deal with. Um, so this is telling me I either need to get more damage on this zone, either by upgrading towers, or I need to make my path longer. So I can refill four lives every two waves and get the overload ability and get a bunch of power. I could get money and the nuclear reactor. Now, the nuclear reactor is really damn good. It's a really good passive AoE damage. It just does damage to everyone. I feel like I'm really good... Um, Already, I like the idea of going for the Pulse Ray too. This way, every time a Pulse Ray kills a unit, I will gain a little bit of power, which will allow me to continue to upgrade Pulse Rays. So I also get the Hypercharge, which for a very small cost of power, I can overload a tower's firing capabilities. Now, unfortunately, this upgrade doesn't actually make these towers stronger. What it does is it makes them earn me resources. But when you sell a tower, you get full resources back. So I'm happy to spend all of this money on all of these towers. I would like to add another tower. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tile here and I'm going to add a pulse ray here. And this will add just a tiny little bit of extra damage to my maze. And then I would like to maybe get another gravity trap here so that people stay inside my damage zones for longer. And then I would like another flame trap. So, you know, uh, but you can see every time this flame thing triggers, like, like, think about this, right? This blast cannon does six damage. This flame trap does five damage and it triggers every half second, whereas this triggers every 1.4 seconds. So, you know, OK, yeah, this is where we're going to start running into issues, like I was saying. Uh, but we are earning a lot of power now, which is great because all of these towers are upgraded. Uh, they can earn up to 15 power per wave, I believe. So we have a really strong eco. If we can perfect waves, we get um, a ton of money. Uh, let's put another pulse ray in here. I think it's necessary 
to make sure because we need to get that we need to get the perfect wave because if we if we perfect a wave and nothing leaks we get 10 money and 5 power so it's an incredibly important part of our build that we maximize that gain an ad tile instantly gain one ad tile every two waves so this would really help me to maze i'm going for a long term return on investment here in my current plan so i could recycle a tile if i wanted to so let me see if i add a tile here and add a tile here and here which is three tiles and I could sell this and block it off, I can make them go the long way around. So, I'm going to add a tile here. I'm going to add a tile here and here. I'm then going to sell this and this. I'm going to recycle this tile and then add a tile in the center because this guy will get really efficient damage if I put a pulse tower here and I give it the upgrade. I'm going to put a couple of pulse towers here to make sure that we can get uh, efficient damage. And I will give them the Pulse Ray upgrade too, so that we can continue to generate extra power. Yeah, we're pretty heavy on the single target as it currently stands, which is, you know, not ideal. Um, but it can be made to work. One problem is all of these Pulse Ray towers, they attack the weakest target in range. And so that if there's like a collection of targets that are of a variety of strengths, uh, they kind of ignore the big thing that we really need them to kill, which is fine. I'm going to add another Pulse Ray over here. Because there's just a lot of damage over here that we need to blast our way through. But we're making this extremely good amounts of power. We're holding the line. Our score is increasing. Okay, nice one. Nothing's getting through, which is I'm very happy about. We also gained another expand tile. So we can get a turret now. The turret deals more damage the lower the target's HP is. We could also get an upgrade to the Flamer. Ooh which would make them take more damage while they're on the trap. Or reduce tower upgrade costs by 3 power. I don't think I care about that. I think I've got to refresh here. None of these... Well, I guess this kind of appeals to me. This turret is good, but I think... I mean, it fires pretty quick, actually. Like, if I look at one of these towers, they fire every 1.5 seconds. I think I'm going to refresh here for a better tower. Now, here is an interesting one. The Pulse Ray U3. When it kills an Axon, it attacks multiple times in quick succession. This effect cannot proc itself. Priority switch to weak. I could also get the hammer, dealing full damage and breaking armor in the primary node only. Adjacent nodes take half damage. So this could be a really, really good way for me to break the armor of my opponents. Now this thing uh, hits in a very specific, like, positioning, like, like this. Um, how do I... Yeah, like you can see the red zone, that's where it actually does its damage. I'm tempted to put it like this. So I might sell one of these blast towers, like so and put a big old hammer right at the start of my maze to start breaking armor. Now, I've got no cash left, but I do have an expand tile. So depending on where I place it, I'll get some money. Now, do I want to try to expand like out this way? Do I want to try to expand for cash? Do I want to try to expand for ad tiles so that I can maze better? I think I would be more interested in money right now. So I'm going to place this all the way over here and it doesn't really matter how it's placed. More that it's just placed here for money. So I'm going to place it something like this. This looks reasonable. I could eventually extend the path down this way. scoop doop doop Now I have another add tile. And I have enough cash to place them with the blast turret, I think. But if I think about it, like, I wish there was a way to hold control and, like, see where my damage zones are. What if I sell this blocker? What happens? Okay, you don't get the blocker back when you sell it. Okay, that's good. That's good intel. Now we know. I reckon this corner tile is an okay place for a blast cannon. So I'll put a blast cannon there. This way we have, like a pretty consistently good damage zone around here. The hammer fires pretty regularly. Um, we want a second gravity trap here, I reckon, to just keep people in range of the hammer a little bit longer. And it's nice that they're cheaper because that has really helped me out, actually. One thing I need to do is I need to get an upgrade for these blast cannons. If I can get an... Because oh, I feel like I'm hitting... A cap on power. I don't think you can have more than 100 power on the bank or something. Because these guys are getting kills, but they're not getting um, more power. So what if I give you the pull... What if I pulse ray up more? Uh, get more upgrades to my pulse rays, I wonder. Alright, nice. We're getting good damage in. So what do we got here? Flame vent upgrade 3. Recess when it's not firing. Gradually increases in damage as long as there's hostiles on the trap. Okay, I don't particularly care about that. Gain 12 credits every wave cleared. That's good money. Or we can get the plasma mine. When an armored axe on a... Ooh, remo a, a, attacks remove armor. I think getting rid of armor could be a really useful way to help our maze out. I also really like the idea of getting more money. But it's not that much money. I'm gonna take the plasma mine. I've definitely gone in a very mine heavy build. So I feel like mines are what, are what works for me. You know what I mean? It's working for me, man. Why would I change it? 
Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, they're coming in. Oh man. Now, I'm feeling like we need like a little bit of AOE over here on the left side. So I think I'm going to add a tile and maybe put another hammer. Um, like here. I think this is what we need to help deal with some of this AOE stuff that we're dealing with. So I'll get to that. But aside from that, I think we're doing relatively okay. I, I think maybe this maximum 15 power game per wave, that's actually across all of these towers together, and they don't individually stack that buff. Okay, that's good to know. So we can upgrade the plasma mind with extra charges per wave. Now, the thing about plasma mines is they only have a certain number of charges per wave. Now, the sniper is really good, but it has it shoots really slowly, but it does have a minimum range. I do need the cash, though. I need the cash more than anything. I mean, I would love this. I would love the 12 credits on every wave, but I'm going to take the immediate cash. I'm going to put down a second hammer. Just to make sure, if anything gets through that first wave, we can make sure that they get caught in that second hammer hammer smash. So we're building up a really concentrated damage zone here, which is what we want to do, I think. You want to concentrate your damage with your gravity traps and your flame traps and all this stuff. And hammer smash, good, good, good. Yeah, the AoE, the extra AoE here, I think, is happening. Now, these gray, these black tiles, they are dead tiles. We will never, ever, ever be able to do anything with those. Like, just, it literally can't be done. We can, you cannot do anything with them, um, which is really unfortunate. Now, there's not much getting through, but I, I'm going to keep an eye on things. I think we're doing okay. Yeah, some of these kind of replicators are getting through, but they're not getting through to the end, which I'm happy about. What about here? Temporal mine? I don't want to do a temporal mine. Once per wave, if there's more than 25 axons... Oh. I'm going to refresh here. None of these really appeal to me. So the Inertia Blaster, what this does is it gains more damage every time it attacks. And it attacks pretty often. Now, I could also upgrade the Sniper to not have a minimum range, which would allow it to attack the front constantly. What else we got here? Tower upgrade cost. I think I'm going to go for the Sniper. I think the Sniper is going to be an important part of my build, especially if I position it correctly, like here. And then I get at the upgrade. Now this thing is constantly just going to be shooting at whatever's at the front of my wave, slowly pushing it back. Now these things I think have armor on them. Um, and I think an armor stack basically means that you will not take damage until the armor is removed. But that's what these hammers are for. Yeah, it looks like we're getting through these guys pretty well. Now, a blocker will appear on these red tiles if I don't use an add tile. At I am going to use an add tile just to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I'm also going to start considering bringing up this link here. Um, so I'll probably sell these two towers and try to force them to walk through this zone. And then I might put like a couple of towers here just to get a little bit more efficient damage towards the end of my maze. Again, I really want to concentrate my power on this section over here. And uh, it looks like the addition of that sniper turret is really helping push back the front of the wave, especially when the front unit is like one of these things. These sniper turrets, they do so much damage, right? 25 damage a shot. Global range. Beams cannot stack on the same target. This seems like a really good addition to my build as well, actually. The orbital cannon. It'll give me really good range. Yeah, I'm going to go for the orbital cannon. Now, this thing has global range, so I could just put it anywhere, like on this non-useful tile. Um, and it should just start blasting. Let's put a second gravity trap over here, just to keep people... In, in, in my high damage zones for longer. And you can see the orbital cannon is uh, is just doing damage kind of semi-randomly on whoever's at the front of the maze. I would It would be really nice to be able to see like performance statistics of each tower. So I could be like, okay, how good is this tower doing this wave? Like, did it did it really help out? Did it do a lot of overkill? Did it do a lot of underkill? You know, what's all the... Oh, I forgot to sell these two towers. That actually might be my, my death here. That I forgot to sell these two. Also, I have an expand tile. I need to. I, I need to. I need to. I need to update my maze. My next wave here. Okay. So, when it hits an axon by itself, it deals drastically increased damage. That's for when an axon is solo. Good against killing bosses. Uh, for every other blast cannon you have, this tower gets a damage bonus up to a cap of eight. That means eight blast cannons in total. That could be quite good. Uh, once per wave, leaking gives all towers a 15% attack speed bonus for 5 seconds. I'm going to go for the upgraded blast cannon here. I have a lot of power that I need to sell. I'm going to add a tile here to prevent this. I'm going to sell both of these towers. I'm going to put a blocker here. And I'm going to put a... Uh, a cheap blast cannon here. So I've made my maze longer, technically, which gives more time for the orbital cannon to do its work. It would be nice to maybe get a sniper turret over here. A second orbital cannon would be kind of interesting. What I really want to do is upgrade these blast cannons with this so that they do more damage. We can do basically double damage with these things if we if we have enough blast cannons. So that's something I want to work on. Um, now I have an expand. Now I can't fit an expand in here. 
I'd like to expand my maze up through this way. So I think something like this really appeals to me like... Yeah, like this really appeals to me. Because it'd be nice if I could make my maze go up and around this way and move these towers up there. But that's all. I've got five add tiles. So maybe if I went one, two, three. Yeah, I couldn't make that work, sadly. I could make this work slightly better if I do this. No, I, I need to block this here, which we will do. Um, I'll just pop... Uh, I'll pop a blast... No, I'll pop a pulse, ray, pulse laser here. And then I'll put another blast cannon here and give it even more damage. So we're, we're just building concentrated zones of damage. So I don't want to place this one, but I do want to start thinking about working on this area. I also want to concentrate my firepower in this zone. There's not a whole lot of damage here. So I'm going to do a couple of flame vents just to increase the concentrated amount of damage over here. And then I guess I'll add a pulse ray with power gain. Eventually, so eventually I'll start selling these pulse rays and replacing them. But my hope is that we got like serious amounts of damage all stacked up. Especially AoE damage and the like, I feel like we got really good multi-target damage, quite poor single target damage for anyone who's strong. Now these guys, see these guys got like swirlies around them. Sometimes they have special abilities, like they have armor so they take less damage, or they have shield, it's all this sort of stuff. So you gotta be careful about that. But yeah, I think we're making it through. The boosters with the shields are, are difficult to deal with. Maybe it would be good if I had a plasma mine. So, axons explode on kill, dealing AoE damage. I don't really need more AoE damage. Stuns and removes shields when triggered. That's pretty good. Charges per wave is two. Uh, I'm going to go for the credits here. The more money I have, the more stuff I can place down. Now, this thing only goes off twice per wave. So, I'm going to put it on this corner. I'm going to put it right here so that it hits the maximum amount of stuff as they, like, rush around this corner. That's the goal. Now... Another orbital cannon wouldn't be terrible. They don't stack, so that means I can hit up to six guys with these, with 25 damage every three seconds. That seems like a really good deal, honestly. Yeah, you see how they fire at different targets, like, because they can't stack the beams? It's like, there goes three, there goes three. So, like, in the early phases of the stage, like, it's pretty inefficient damage, but as the stage goes on, I think it builds up to be a really good amount of damage. Oh, we got some kind of big tank here. Periodically resupply all enemy, all allies nearby. Okay, dangerous. All right, let's see here. Ooh. Uh, we can upgrade the frag hammer to stun. Or we can go for the frag hammer, which means it, no, it, it attacks much faster, at reduced damage, but it ignores and breaks shields. That's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, let's take it, sure. I'm going to add a tile here just so the maze doesn't get blocked. Yeah, these, these black tiles here are making it really hard for me to get efficient damage. But that's kind of like, that's part of the strategy of the game, right? You got to deal with that. Do I want to upgrade this? Sure, let's upgrade this frag hammer. I'm going to go ahead and sell this tower and replace it with another frag hammer over here. So we break armor, so we break shields here, we break armor here, and then we break armor here. So we, we, we got a setup, so it's going to be quite hard for units to get through without having their armor broken. I'll put a gravity trap here and here to keep people in range longer. And then we're good to go. And I'll probably put another, honestly, probably put another hammer here. Because I just like the idea of having a bunch of hammers. It's just like an exciting, cool idea, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, I, I think things are going relatively well. We got a nice thing. We do have to deal with the big red cube. This bad boy right here. He's got a lot of health. We only have to break one health bar, I think, this wave. Uh, but he has three. I think when you break his health bar, he like... His, his model changes. Oh, orbital cannon. So this increases the damage and allows all beams to mark the same target. I all, now, this is really good. Each tower trap of the same type reduces the cost of the next one up to a maximum of 10 credits. So like, the, I could be placing down gravity traps for 26 money. I think that is just such a massive upgrade because I've already placed one, two, three, four, five gravity traps. So now they're like, they're practically half price, which is insanity. Half price gravity traps. Uh, I'm getting a 20% discount on pulse rays, 20% discount on blast cannons. Not quite so much on flame vents, but still. Um, honestly, flame, ve flame vents on corners are bad because there is a unit that bounces off corners. So I want to avoid corners if I can. There is a viable tile right here for a tower of some kind. I'm not sure what would fit. Maybe a sniper actually would fit really nicely here, especially if I gave it the attack the front of the wave ability. And that way these guys will focus fire on the big red cube. Um, because it's at the front of the wave. And so they're going to consistently just bring him down slowly. Uh, we do have another expand tile, so probably going to have to look into upgrading our maze here in a little bit. I'm going to hypercharge this tower so that it fires much faster. 
to push back the front of the wave. And I'm probably going to just keep hypercharging my sniper towers. Yeah, now we're running into trouble. I'm going to hypercharge my, um, my orbital cannon to try to buy more time. I'm going to add some tiles here and some pulse cannons. Ooh, I don't have the money. Okay, they're finally breaking through, but this is, this is, this is, the game is hard, man. Like, we've, we've, once the boss comes out onto the field, the game gets real hard. Uh, and so we are now learning about how difficult it can really be. Ooh, AoE on the orbital cannon is as sick as hell. Also, faster firing orbital is sick. I love that. I'm going to go for the faster firing orbital. Uh, I'm going to go for an expand. I need to I need to get this guy to divert away from the main line here. I'll put a sniper right there. Sorry, invalid build point because I need to add this, this and this. And then if I put a sniper here, that will redirect him. And I'll upgrade this sniper with the no more range cap so he will be focused firing down the big red cube for me and i'll be hypercharging him to try to make sure we get through this wave all right all right let's give him the hypercharge boom i need you to need you to take down this big red cube he's got how much health he's got a hundred and something so he should be able to finish that big red cube for me um for this orbital i'm gonna add a tile there to prevent that from dying and i want to move an orbital somewhere to the front line because they will get this ability here for each axon on range reduce the cooldown of the next cat attack up to a cap so for every axon on range you'll get a 0 0.3 reduction so up to what is it uh 10 you'll get three if there's 13 axons in range he's basically firing three times as fast which is insane So these guys split when they die, which is really unfortunate to deal with. It's difficult to deal with, but I think we're slowly managing here. Um, let's speed things up. I think the big red cube was a bit of a challenge, but we beat him. Upgraded tower kills grant one credit up to 30 per wave. Breaks armor. Ooh, and deals full damage to all three tiles in range. This is a huge upgrade to the frag hammer. I'm going to go ahead and take that and immediately upgrade this guy with the f oh i need more power okay we can get some power now i've got five ad tiles i want to prevent this from happening um i really want to put an orbital cannon here now this upgrade ability has a range of two and i believe these pulse rays have a range of two so i want to put them somewhere like right here if i sell this and i sell this i can put an orbital cannon here then upgrade this orbital cannon with this ability so now, all enemies within two tiles of this, which matches this AoE right here, will give this guy a 0 0.3 second reduction on his attack speed, which is effectively like a 5% attack speed buff, um, which is genuinely insane for this, uh, like, this unit's abilities. Um, so that's really, really nice. Now, I've still got 100 money in the bank, so I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Uh, let's have a little thinky-think. Yeah. I think we can add a couple of AoE towers over here just to make the maze slightly longer and make it slightly more efficient and add a little bit of damage to the late game of the maze. But AoE, you need AoE, you need, uh, you need AoE and you, oh, what is this thing? What are you? Any attack from outside the barrier will deal reduced damage to creep inside the shield. So it's a shield generator. Okay. He's a little bit, a little bit of a, an issue for us, but the smash hammer is removing armor, making, meaning these units are much easier to deal with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to upgrade the smash hammer with this ability. I, I can't quite do that yet. All right, we got a problem. And the problem we have is that these guys are getting shields from somewhere. They're teleporting forward, which is annoying. Once per wave, leaking... The gravity trap stunning is useful. I really need money. What I re need right now is money. So I'm going to take anything that gives me money. I'm going to add a tile here to prevent a blocker from appearing. Even though it's not actually important to me. Okay. Let's put another hammer here. I'm going to sell one of these towers. And then rebuild it. Because I just want to free up the power. So I can give this guy the frag hammer upgrade. And then I'll place a couple of gravity generators here. To keep people inside this frag hammer longer. So these guys at the front are tanky. So this is actually the furthest I've ever gotten in the game I'm pretty sure. 
It's getting hard. But I think it's going okay. These these little AOE dudes are kind of hard to deal with, but I think we're 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 kind of dealing with them. We need more damage at this end of the maze. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a tile here and then add another blaster. In the hopes that just having masses of blasters in this area does the job. Now this guy self-regenerates, which is annoying. Yeah, this is this is why I wanted to have the blast zone. Because these little guys, they generate and they explode and they do all the stuff that you don't like. Now, I'd like to... Gains AoE. I like the idea of the orbital cannon having AoE. Uh, but I really need this power. I need the money. I'm going to take the power here. I'm going to sell this gravity orbital cannon. I'm going to replace this blast cannon. No. I'm going to replace this pulse ray right here with an orbital cannon another one of these faster firing orbitals this is just strictly an upgrade and it's a really damn good upgrade too um so what else we got i've got an expand tile maybe i can get some money out of that gain 80 credits when you expand here hell yeah so we got the potential to increase the length of our maze and honestly that wouldn't be a bad move so we could probably start redirecting people down around here I've got 171 cash and 84 power. What could I use that on? I think making these guys AOE smashers would be a useful ability. Um, and then adding another one of these shooter turrets somewhere. I guess it doesn't really matter. I just need to get them down. Yeah, I, I feel like I've gone for a pretty efficient build when it comes to traps. Wait, can I... Do I trigger these? Interesting. I don't know how I don't know how these plasmines tr trigger. Um, but I feel like I feel like we're holding, and that was not a feeling I thought we would have. I really like these plasma, these uh, orbital cannons. How fast they fire! That like feels really good to me. I feel like they're doing really efficient damage. I feel like people are getting through now. Why are they getting through? Extremely tough. It's the supply tanks. I need more of these snipers in this sector to push back the wave. Yeah, I think it would be good to get more money. A 40% damage amp to axons on the trap. That would be really good in conjunction with these towers. Yeah, I'm going to take the money. I'm going to add a tile right here. I'll add another sniper. My goal is just to have a, a whole stack of snipers over here that basically finish off the late game because people spend so much time in the zone. I need to do something with the zone over here too. There's a whole bit of weirdness going on. Yeah, there's some healing going on that I, I I haven't really managed to nail down. I think some of these guys just heal. Some of them, like, teleport forward as well. And they're getting through with shields up. Which ain't ideal. I think this might be a wrap for me. I think I'm dead. Um, we did our best, but that's really all you can do sometimes. Man. Feels bad. But a 44 minute game with 90,000 score. We almost broke the 100,000 score mark. We got to wave 21, 17 perfect waves. We lost all of our lives. We built 53 towers. We upgraded 23. We destroyed over 1,678 axons. And we got a total path length of 62. Uh, yeah. Axon TD. This game has a lot of promise. It has a lot of potential. I think some of the things that I would maybe consider changing is... A, a, when you're in giving players a perk choice at the start of the round, uh, giving players, letting players choose the tower they start with, always having these basic blaster and stuff, that's kind of cool. Um, there's, yeah, I think there's a few suggestions that I would make here. For example, graphically, sometimes it can, you know, it, I think the graphics stability in terms of like how, um, what's the word? Sometimes I get like flashing lights. I had to turn down the graphics of the game like really, really low in order to just be, make it playable because the, like the lights were flashing and V-Sync or whatever. There was something just wrong. I think it would be really nice if there was a way to see the performance of my towers. Like for example, with this with this blast tower here, like how much damage is it really doing per wave? What is its uptime? Like these are the things I want to know about my towers to, to start to start to learn like an intuitive sense of how well am I doing? Um, what else? So how well am I doing? Intuitive sense... Uh, it would be nice to know, it would be nice to know what the actual stats of a tower are right now. So like if this thing has 10 units in range, it would be nice to see the DPS speed 
that it is like like the actual attack speed that it has currently based on its buffs it would be nice to see when its next attacks are triggering so i can kind of visual like like it would be nice if i could click on this tower and a little bar would fill up or you know like a little circle would fill that would show that it's getting ready to fire uh it would be cool if you could show that visually i don't know if you do and i wasn't paying too much attention uh I think I think generally you have a really cool and interesting idea uh, for things like gravity traps. Like I don't really know how efficient these flame traps were, right? Like uh, that's that's kind of information I would love to be able to access. Um, how much like how much longer did this gravity track make enemies? take how much damage did enemies take while slowed you know these are the kind of things that i would like to know about all these traps anyway i'm going to call that the end of this quick look at axon td hope you guys enjoy this i love roguelike tower I, I love roguelike games i love tower defense games and so my favorite type of game to just get lost in every now and again is a roguelike tower defense game really excited for this one um go ahead and wish list it on steam it's not really out yet do go check it out i'm really excited for this i probably won't play it again until there's a major update uh but until then i love you all very much and i'll see you guys next time Bye-bye.